Hey everybody, today is November 14th, and I'm up in my studio. I am releasing an album or an EP next Friday. It's called The Death of a Robot. I wanted to kind of go through uh, how I made this one of the songs here, and I'll do some more tutorials on how I made the other songs. There's five songs in total. Um, basically, what the EP is about, it's about a robot who malfunctions and then dies. I'd been watching a lot of sci-fi... And also, I read an article about a robot called a, uh, I think it's J-I-B-O, and he was a social robot, and the makers of the robot stopped updating him, so basically the robot never updated anymore and kind of died off. But people had gotten really used to him and were really saddened by it, and I guess, from what I understand, I think his servers are back up and he's updating again, and I might get one for Christmas, who knows? But anyway, um, the first one of these songs is called Beware, and it's kind of how it starts off. So I'm going to go ahead and just play it up through probably the bridge, and then we'll take it from there. to learn enough about these new dangers to be able to make a reasonable action decision when we are confronted with them. Okay, so that's the song up through the bridge. Um, let me kind of go through a little bit how I did this. So the song kind of just came out of nowhere. Um, what I was doing, I was screwing around with the Moog over here trying to get a bass sound I liked, and I couldn't find one for some reason that day that I liked. So um, let's start with the bass. I went with this prophet from Arteria, and it is, um, so I started off with this preset called Bass Wave, and I just tweaked it to where I wanted it. Let me take everything off and kind of play it f how it sounds without everything first. Let's see here. Uh, sorry for the homeless look, I haven't shaved since COVID started, or had my hair cut, so uh, once COVID ends, then I will probably shave my beard off and get a haircut until then. It's just going to be like this. So here is the bass without everything on it. Okay, so that's basically how the bass goes. Um, what I did there is just did a pattern that I liked. I tried to quantize it and didn't like the way it sounded quantized, so I went back and just tweaked it to where it kind of fit in. Um, first thing I did on this thing is I added an SSL EQ to it, and I'll show you what I did with that. Um, cut a little bit at the low end, like the really low end up out here, and then I kind of boosted right around 257. Um, boosted a little bit there, and that is basically all I did on that, so this is what it sounds like with the EQ. You're, I don't know if you'll be able to notice it, but it kind of gives it a little more room in the back, or in the bottom end, and then also um, when I boosted that 250, it kind of gave it some other stuff there, some more like body. Next thing I did was um, 
put in the H comp, which is one of my favorite compressors, uh, especially when I'm going to side chain stuff. So what I meant by that is, so here's the compressor itself. What I did is, if you see up here, side chain, I side chained it to this kick here. Um, so let me play the kick and that together. So basically what it does is when the kick hits, the bass drops. So it just ducks itself out of the way. That is what the uh, bass does on there. So let me play that with the kick and uh, show you what that sounds like. See how it's bouncing? So it's ducking every time. All right, so what I did on that is I set it to not that high of a ratio, um, put it 100% wet, did the BPM to um, to correlate with the host there. And so basically that's all that does. And the last thing I added is one of my favorite things ever, the sausage fattener. If you haven't had this, check it out um, or heard of it. It is by Dada Life, who are a great band, and they have a couple great plugins. So this thing just takes your bass to the next level. So I'm going to play it without this thing and then with it. Okay, so there's without. I'm going to put the bass on. So it just adds, just adds some depth to it. Um, it's a really cool plugin. It's really affordable. And one of the cool things is you can watch what he does here. Um, where's he set at? 14%. So if I bring him up, he gets angrier and angrier. And that'll just lead to all kinds of distortion. Um, put him back down to where he was. So it's kind of fun to just play with him. So that is kind of how I started the song with the bass. And then from there, I kind of thought, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? What kind of drum pattern do I want? Uh, 909 works good for this song, I thought. So let me just play the 909, what it is. So it's just a recording of a 909, not a real one. I wish I had a real one. If anybody has three grand or so they want to donate or just buy me one, I'm more than happy to take it. Um, so let's go ahead and do the kick real quick. All right, so here's the kick. It's your basic kick. Nothing exciting there. Um, I put an SSL EQ on there, so what I did there is I, I cut out a bit, like a 53, added some low in there, uh, added some uh, low mids around, where's the low mid at, um, where did I do that, oh sorry, uh, around 2000, and then from there, the next thing I added was um, the Distressor, which is kind of cool, so I went with this guy, uh, Chris Cody, he went with his uh, big kick um, preset because this is a brand new compressor for me and kind of tweaked it to where I wanted it and this is kind of how it sounds. So you can see it's just crushing the thing, which I wanted. I wanted to crush it and it sounds great. Uh, this is probably one of my new favorite plugins of all time. And that was all I did on the kick. Um, let's go down to the snare. Snare is a sampled snare. Um, I'm not sure what I sampled on the snare itself. Not sure what's oh I can tell you what I used. I used a Q sampler, which is something new in Logic. I used a DR660 snare, so I used uh, just a sample of that snare from a drum machine. And how it sounds without everything is pretty interesting. It's gonna be your nothing exciting. It's like your basic boring snare. Uh, first thing I did was added an EQ. Um, use this EQ from Focusrite. Um, it's really kind of fun. Just kind of killed some of the low end here. Um, took out a bit here at the low mids, it looks like. Added some high mids. And that's really about it I did on that. Next thing I did is I used the compressor, the uh, distressor. Um, used a different one this time and tweaked it to my liking. And the last thing I did is uh, use Chromaverb here. And this is probably one of my favorite presets, uh, Collins Gate. So it reminds me of the Phil Collins gated drums. You have to tweak it a little bit to get it to sound the way you want it to, but this is how it sounds. They have that huge, like, boom, that gate, that verb and gate. So that's how that one went. Um, last thing I did, I did hats. 
Um, the only thing I won't play all the hats. The only thing exciting I did on the hats was um, sampled a 909 hi hat, looks like, and um, used Pan Man from Sound Toys just to make it go back and forth, just to you know make it a little more exciting. I did that hi hat, and then I did another one, same thing. Difference of difference on this one is I put an Echo Boy on here just to give it some more. Oh, let's play the Echo real quick with the Echo Boy. So the Echo Boy, what it sounded like is... Doop, doop, doop. That's the one, two, hang on, it's over here. Okay. So this is what it sounded like. Hear that? It gives it that delay. Kind of sounded cool in that there, so I did the delay there. Okay, so this is, let's just play the drums all together, see, just give you a sample of what they sound like. Okay. Now let's do it over here so you don't have to hear. You can see the pan man on the hatch. You can hear it going back and forth. Okay, so there's the drums. Let's do a couple more, and then I'll uh, we'll take it from there and just end it from there. Okay. Um, okay, this is what is this thing? Okay, so that's a synth from Omnisphere, and what it's doing is it's doing all kinds of fun stuff. So what it does, let me pull Omnisphere up here. Alright, so what it's doing there is... Alright, it's got a compressor on it and an echo, a little bit of an echo on it. Then EQ there, so all I did on that is... You can see I modulated a bunch of stuff there. Just kind of moved it up and down and um, just kind of gave it a cool sound. I don't, I think the sound was neat. Um, I'll play it in context of everything here. Almost sounds like a vocoded robot in a way. Okay, so there that is. And let's see here. All right, I mean, there wasn't a lot to this song, honestly. Um, like, Instrument-wise, it's pretty simple instrument-wise. Um, vocals. So for vocals, this is what takes me forever to do on some of these things since I'm not a singer. Um, I have to go find samples um, that are royalty-free, or I have to make them up myself, with me not being a singer, that doesn't really happen. So um, went to archive.org, and if you haven't been there, it's really cool. Um they have all kinds of videos. You just make sure that they are Creative Commons uh, for public domain. That way you're not going to get busted because they're going to be in the public domain and you can use them. So I found something from like, I think this is from like the 60s or 70s. 60s or 70s. And it's just this like bizarre commercial or PSA thing that talks about technology. And this it's like this guy going to work, but I liked his voice. And so I just kind of went through the video, chopped up what I wanted, and took it from there. So the first thing I did was this thing, he overloaded the circuit. And that's what he says. So he says right here... We may have overloaded the circuit. I mean, that's all he says. We may have overloaded the circuit. The only thing I did on that is I put this to a bus. And where does bus go? Okay, so I put this to a bus. We may have overloaded the circuit. Okay. And so all I did is put a... Um, telephone kind of thing on there so it sounds like he's a telephone we take his telephone off and we'll show you what he sounds like we may have overloaded the circuit so sounds kind of boring but if i put that back we may in have overloaded the circuit and the reason i put it to a bus is that way i can control how much i want of that going um on these i did something beforehand so i did the eq and all that and edited them as well not perfectly because i didn't want them to come out too perfect because i didn't you know if, it kind of gives it that vibe when it came out in the 50s or, or sorry, 60s or 70s. kind of gives it that vibe. Um, I don't want to make it too perfect because then it's going to take away from that. So he says that, and then um, the next thing he says is dependent on technology. So what he does here, let's go ahead and let me take everything off here. 
Okay, so yeah, this is what happened. Okay, so his vocals, since it was the same guy, same vocals, what I did is I sent everything to a bus. So the bus over here, what it does is, first it does an EQ, so I chopped a bunch off his voice, and then from here I did uh, some compression, a little more EQ, and, a, and two compressors, and a little bit of an exciter, and I'll go through that real quick. Let me take everything off and show you what it sounded like. So I'm going to take his phone off, and here's what he sounds like. For we have become a people, indeed a whole world, dependent upon the technology that we have created. Okay, so that's what he says. So if I put the EQ on then... For we have become a people... Just kind of takes out some of the low ends and the high end. The and then the Neutron, let me show you what that does. So the first thing I did on that is... Um, did some EQ here. You'll see I bumped it a little bit here, dropped it down here and here. They must have been frequencies I didn't care for. Um, the compressor, I went ahead and um, did a tiny bit of compression here. And then on the second compressor, I uh, did a little bit more. did an 8 to 1 ratio. And then on the exciter, um, you can hit this thing schools learn, so it kind of takes does uh, machine learning, figures out what his vocal range was or what he was in, splits it if it wants to, and then from there I just kind of screwed around until I found out what I wanted it to sound like. So let's play that with everything in it. For we have become a people, indeed a whole world, dependent upon the technology that we have created. And then the last thing I did is I added uh, the Butch Vig stuff. For we have become a people, indeed a whole world, dependent upon... Cool. All right, last thing I will show you is, um, well, two things. I'll show you the uh, what I meant by not doing the vocals perfectly. So I'm going into his vocals right here, and if you look here, I'm not sure if you can see this, but if you can, there's like a breath right here, and then he's done talking. So if I want to perfect it, I would cut all this out, make it all choppy and perfect, and cut all this out, but I kind of want to leave that vibe in there. So that's what I meant by not making the vocals perfect. Um, second, last, a couple of last things I'll show you is on this album, I or EP, um, I kind of put some hidden stuff in there. So each of my songs is going to have Morse code. Um, and this one, here's what Morse code sounds like here. And I believe what he's saying is beware. He's saying beware. That's Morse code and beware. And I don't know Morse code by heart, so I had to look up how to do it. Um, down here again, did the same thing with him. Let's see what he sounds like here. So that's beware. And then let's go to the other one. Cool. And the last thing I did is put in, I'll show you, put transitions. So transitions and I don't get along a lot of the time. I understand the need for them. I'm just terrible at doing them or getting creative with them, so I've been working on that. Uh, first thing I did is, on this one, I put in a riser, so let's go through that real quick. So that was kind of cool. That riser was kind of cool. So what I do that riser? I'd already processed it, so it. I obviously put some sort of um, reverb and echo on it. And transition. So here's the other transition I did. And not that exciting, I know. But uh, a cool thing you can do in Logic is, if you see these fades, they're actually speeding up and slowing down. So you listen to it speed up and slow down. All right, if I take those out, which I'll take them out real quick. Remove fades. Here we go. So, you know, not that exciting, but it makes it a little more exciting when I do that. And then on this one, I completely slowed it down. So let's take a look at that. So if I take the fades off. Remove. So. Not that exciting. So basically, that is the song, and I look forward to sharing the rest of the songs with you. There's five in total, and I'll do some more kind of walkthroughs how I did everything. 
If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below, and uh, please subscribe. I'm going to post more videos out on this channel. I'm getting better about doing that, and uh, look forward to sharing more stuff with you. Thanks again. Bye.